And Darren Gauchi, who had a similar experience in January, today had plenty of reasons to smile. Darren Gauchi spent four months on the recovery trail following his horrific fall from Strike the Gong. But since resuming two weeks ago, has already ridden five winners. And today at Warrnambool rode Call Me The Breeze in the Bush Newmarket, the Wongoom Handicap. And it seems the Gauch is back riding better than ever. And Gauchi nursing Call Me The Breeze, he's ridden it perfectly, about a length in front of Wingara Star. A couple of lengths to Flash Sam, followed by classified Lady Belkunda of Knight of Oscar. Call Me The Breeze in front, Gauchi's ridden in a treat. Call Me The Breeze in front and it's the Gauch again. Call Me The Breeze, a half length Wingara Star, Flash Sam third. Meanwhile, one of Sydney's leading jockeys, Ken Russell, has successfully come back after a shocking fall in February. Russell lost a kidney, four litres of blood and broke four ribs when his mount, Killer Khan, fell in the Orange Cup. But at his first ride back, Russell won the second race at Canterbury today on the long shot, Whispering Sands. The doctor said it would be at least two months before I could get back on a horse and uh, it was just over two months by the time I started riding work again. The scars will be there forever and... Uh, uh, actually, the, the hoof print is still on the side of my rib cage too, so it, it hasn't faded much in the last six weeks, so it looks like we're stuck with it too. Now the race results from Warrnambool, the Quadrilla, four, seven, eight and six, five hundred and fifty one dollars sixty. The Quad Extra paid one thousand and ninety dollars fifty cents on seven, eight, six and two. The Daily Double, seven and six, seventeen dollars and the Extra Double, eight and two, twenty six dollars and twenty cents. Well, race caller Ron Hawkswell had every reason to be caught out last night when one of the premier Greyhound Cup races left punters shrouded in mystery. The Warrigal Cup boasted a class field. The lead-up race had punters sitting on the edges of their seat and then the fog rolled in and the man known as the Hawk found he needed more than a sharp eye for detail. Gee, I can hear the lure rolling. Well, I dare say they're off and running in the Cup. Now, just waiting for them to make their appearance in the straight. Cannot see anything. The moment. Here they come into the straight. Uh, three uh, spring at them just in front. Uh, getting up on the inside. Trombury Ace, though. And Trombury Ace has won the cup from Spring Adam and Maradona Magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was one consolation for Ron Hawksville. He got the winner of the race two after. Any fog conditions for tomorrow? We're going to find out. Back well, to you, Tracy. Julie Foster will tell us all about it right after this break. and then Shackle Star down the outside. Wingara Star is out after the leader. Call me the breeze, call me the breeze, a neck in front. Wingara Star on the outside is trying hard from Flash Sam. It's call me the breeze, the gouch in front near the line. He's won the one game. Call me the breeze, call me the breeze. Three quarters Wingara Star ahead to Flash Sam third. Call Me The Breeze paid $2 for the win and 85 cents. Wingara Star returned two thirty-five, and Flash Sam one twenty. Mr Cheap was the unplaced favourite. And for night, tonight, Jen, that's all in sport. Thank you, Dixie. And Paul, a little bit of what Premier Joe calls liquid sunshine today. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> a bit of rain round. And Greyhound Bold Treese has rewritten the records. The Warrnambool Dog won his third consecutive Sandown Cup last night. It's the first time in the history of Melbourne Greyhound racing that a dog has won a feature event three times. Bold Treese has a long list of achievements. The champion stayer was named Greyhound of the Year last season. But a broken hock almost ended his career six months ago and his form since looked as if his best days were over. But last night put up one of his greatest performances. Bold Treese, number six, is renowned for his slow starts and fast finishes. Last night in the Sandown Cup was no different. Even with half the race completed, the Warrnambool trained dog was still last. Bold Treese had won the previous previous two Sandown Cups and a win in last night's classic would immortalise him. Bold Trace is starting to storm home. Second chance, the leader. Bold Trace getting through. Three in a row. Bold Trace is going to be stormed away at the finish. At a major setback in the bid by Chris Everett to win her sixth Italian Open and eighth French Open. Began with the Briley Steeple, a pointer towards Thursday's Grand Annual. And as usual, it provided plenty of excitement. The Briley is a test for both horse and rider, especially for those who haven't been around the sometimes tricky Warrnambool circuit. On Thursday, they attempt the same course, only in the Grand Annual, it's twice round. Today's race soon unfolded into a Horses for Courses affair. Coming to the first, the man, oh, they both run off. They both run off, the two leaders have run off and there's another one that's lodged its rider. This allowed the old-timer and top-weight Miss Dispense the luxury of the lead, but it was commission-read in his rider, David Butch Lundrigan, who returned to race riding after retirement late last year 
to throw out the challenge. And for Londrigan, he's one rider who can find his way around Warnable blindfolded. He's won the annual on four occasions in the last nine years. And Commission Red has won it by a length and a half. And Commission Red, ridden by Butch Londrigan, started at six to one from Tararula at nine to two, and Mr. Spence hung on for third at fourteen to one. Magic Paul was the unplaced favourite at seven to two. And good night to you, Rob. Thank you. And after these messages, Rob Jill returns with more on the weather and the Royal Air in strife again on the polo field. All dish legs, dishwashers have... ...grand annual winners combined to win the famous Briley steeple at Warrnambool today, but for once the victors were upstaged. Two of the favourites, Magic Paul and Rolita, made a sensational exit at the Alfred Road Double. The, the Briley is the traditional lead-up to Thursday's grand annual steeplechase and more often than not produces a remarkable race. Today was the daddy of recent times when Magic Paul refused to jump the second of the double at Alfred Road, running the grey Rolita off the track. And up and over Magic Paul runs in and in fact he's run off Magic Paul and run Rolita off. They've both run off and they've come a cropper. They must have run down a ditch or something there. Commission Red goes to him on the outside. Two away, Tara Ruler. Commission Red's taken the lead. He's won two races in 75 starts, but this is going to be his third. He's clear of Tara Ruler, running on strongly for second. And then Mr Spence for Commission Red wins a length and a half, Tara Ruler. Three to Mr Spence. Incredibly, Rolita, Magic Paul and their jockeys, Michael Patton and Shane Jennings, escaped injury. After running off the track, they had to hurdle a barbed wire fence before falling down a ditch. Is it one of the scariest experiences you've had as a jockey? Oh, yeah. I'd say so. There should be a uh, white rail across from jump to jump. But uh, if they didn't do that, then uh, they probably should take that wire fence out and fill in that drain. Shane Jennings, the rider there of Magic Pool, the Quaddy 4128, 2580, Quad Extra 12816, 828, Daily Double 1 and 8, 420, Extra Double 2 and 16, $88.35. Olympic rowing hopefuls Adair Ferguson and Gillian Campbell have been given another grand annual meeting. The feature of today's program was the running of the time-honoured Briley steeplechase, the traditional lead-up to the annual on Thursday, and the big crowd witnessed an early sensation. The Briley field was heading in the clockwise direction to the Alfred Road double about 1,000 metres after the start when the favourite Magic Paul triggered off a dramatic spill. Here's the first of the double. Magic Paul has run a Rolita off the track. They've both gone through the inside and there's another one gone down behind them. So there are three of them out of the race. Norgwyn Force was the other horse which came to grief. To the end of the race now, and the 10-year-old Mr Spence led them to the last. The down towards the last fence they come. Mr Spence tackled by Commission Red. They jump it together, two in front of Tara Ruler. The jumping's all over, and Commission Red took the lead from Mr Spence and Tara Ruler. Commission Red's in front of Tara Ruler and Mr Spence, and Commission Red is starting to come away. Commission Red laundering and keeps him going by a length and a half. Tara Ruler a great run second, three lengths to Mr Spence. Commission Red started at six to one and beat Tara Ruler by a length and a quarter, with Mr Spence two and a half lengths away third. The time was 3.59.5. Fortunately, all horses and riders involved in the early mishap escaped injury. And for tonight, Jennifer, that's all from the sports desk. Well, thanks, Peter. And all the riders and horses were OK after the that. The riders race. and horses are OK. Probably actually feeling a lot better than you with that cold. <laughs> I bet they are. But, uh, well, when's the big day at Warrnambool? Thursday. Um, Probably if the weather continues, smog or without, mm -hmm. uh, they'll get about 20,000 down. It's a great race and you've got mm. sort of names in that race like the Man Trap, the Cox's Road Double, the Alfred Road Double, into Briley. It's fantastic. A great day. Everybody, all roads Sounds lead to wonderful. Warrnambool on Thursday. OK. Thanks, Peter. And Paul, we saw in the news tonight a reference to smog, six mm. fewer than the total for last year. Is That's air pollution true. getting worse in Melbourne? Well, you'd think that, Glenn, wouldn't you? But
Right, and we're back here at uh, Warrnambool for the next big event on the programme, the Hammonds Dual Act Warrnambool Cup. Time to start at 2.40 and will be run over 2,200 metres. And at this stage, I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome our audience through Channel 10 in Melbourne, joining us through BTV6 in Ballarat, GMV6 in Shepparton, and uh, SCS in Mount Gambier. We hope you enjoy the telecast for today. Of course, we've been talking through those other stations for the benefit of our 10 audience for the uh, last half hour. But it's our pleasure to bring you uh, these next few races and I'm sure you will enjoy it. My co-host uh, with me here today is Keith Hillier. A good afternoon to you again, Keith. Well, thank you, Phil. And uh, the runners, as you mentioned, are in the mounting yard for the Warrnambool Cup. It's a very good field, too. Uh, headed in the weights by Dandy Andy. That's Dandy Andy on screen. He was a uh, giant killer at Flemington three starts back when uh, he spoilt the match race between Beau Rogue and Bone Crusher. His form at two runs in Sydney was pretty ordinary, but he ran into some very uh, uh, heavy tracks in Sydney and he was not suited. Harry White is riding uh, Dandy Andy today. Not only is he out to win the Warrnambool Cup again, but he is uh, riding the horses a trial to see whether Dandy Andy will go to Canberra on Saturday, on Sunday, to race again against Beau, Rush, uh, Beau Rogue, not Beau Rogue, Phil, against Bone Crusher again, and the new star, Beau Zem. He's on $3.65 for your 50 cent win bet. All right, and we look now at number two, Scar Villa, to be ridden by Darren Gauchy and trained by George Handler. Scarvilla showing a dollar eighty for fifty cents for the win. Scarvilla won the Darwin Cup uh, about uh, thirteen months ago. Darren Gauchy.